just give me one minute to. This is usually the part of the show where people need to say. My glasses are steaming up a little. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones, the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by comedian David Cross. He's finishing up the Making America Great Again tour, and if you missed it, don't worry, because there's a Netflix special, August 5th, Making America Great Again. David, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. My wife is not happy that I'm doing this. She's okay. not? No, she has tried numerous times to uh, persuade me to not do it. Well, let me ask you this. Why'd you decide to do it? I kind of like a challenge. I like experiencing things that are very extreme and, you know, at least once. So, you know, I watched like four or five of these clips. You can see people, it stops them in their tracks. And I know going into this, it's not gonna be pleasant. Could be a good 24 hours of just ass on fire, just literally flames. Like a blue butane, you know, you could cut steel with what's going to happen eventually. So let's, uh, let's try it out. I gotta compliment you, first of all, on your production value, it's fantastic. Do you mean it? No. I mean, these wings look like the kind of wings you get at Madison Square Garden in the early 70s. Yeah, just uh, behind the curtains on uh, what yes. a great experience it is to be on our show. The Making America Great Tour, your first time on the road in what, six years? Yeah, it was a little under six, but, but rounded up to six. What did you miss most about being on the road? What did you miss least? The thing I missed most was getting to do sets where you go to people. Bob Odenkirk and I would do these little uh, mini tours and then they would always be just like East Coast cities, West Coast cities. And you really feel kind of guilty. People are like, we drove seven hours, you know, because uh, this is the closest you're coming. And, and it, it really is nice to be able to go to, to people. The thing that I miss that I that I miss the least about it is, and it happened a couple times where you get depressed and you kind of spiral into this little depression where it's usually in the middle of the tour, you're on your you know 12th show in a row, and you really truly don't know what town you're in, what time zone you're in, and there's nothing to do. That can get really oppressive, you know, jerking off, watching. 24-hour news, whatever. Uh, not not in that order. Not maybe. simultaneously. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah, but not exactly in that order. Do you all have toothpicks by any chance? That's toothpicks. all right. I'll wait till the end. I, it's my shitty British teeth are catching all this stuff. I know that you're a big fan of the Sky Mall. So much stupid shit in it. I love it. You I went love out business, it. Isn't it? Yeah, they went bankrupt, but you can still order online. Okay, good. <laughs> I want to show you some items and just react to them. Tell me if you think you'd buy. Tell them if you think it should have been invented, not invented, just whatever. I just want to show you some that I think okay. you might enjoy. Are these out of Sky Mall? All of them? All of them are out of Sky Mall. Okay. A replica of the Oval Office desk. If that's the president's... Well, where's like the cubby hole for the girl to... Yeah, where's I don't see Monica? She, yeah. Yeah, where would she... Well, well they no. all had one. Don't be... Come on. It's not just <laughs> Bill Clinton that fucking got a blowjob. For $5,415. What do you think of that? Uh, money well spent, for sure. Especially if you're doing kind of a um, Mission Impossible thing where you've kidnap somebody and you know they come to and you, you're trying to convince them they're in a room like this you know and trying to convince them that you're the president and that they've been uh, asleep for you know 16 years and probably cheap for that kind of thing outside of that use then no they have a bunch that's of that's racist I don't know what you're showing me but that's fucking racist the giant male silverback gorilla statue with four thousand seven hundred and seven dollars a bunch of white cheerleaders no, it is you. weird fucking. that they frame it this way and, and after Harambe Come on, man. Have a heart, Sky Mall. Jesus. When you're thumbing through, do you ever see those? Because sometimes they'll have like an elephant that weighs 800 pounds and is like 15 feet tall that you're just supposed to put in your yard, I guess. Yeah. Well, I love my favorite is the the creepy zombie thing <laughs> that like the grapes like. Who? What? <laughs> they like Sasquatch looking behind a tree and stuff. It's yeah. a heated hoodie with a power bank on sale for $144. That's that's one way to do it, but you could. Also, uh, if you were really cold, uh, put something over the hoodie, like a, a coat or something like that. <laughs> if only they it's, invented something. Yeah. Do you ever think like who buys these things or like who? Never. What about uh, this? When you do an international leg of a tour, are there certain towns that seem to like David Cross more than others? People had told me, oh, they're more reserved in Europe, especially in Scandinavia. And the last four shows I did were in all in Scandinavia, and I'd been told like by a number of people, 
yeah, the Scandinavian audiences are very reserved. You know, they'll love you, but they'll respect you, and they're not gonna whatever. And they were great. They were the best shows I had. The, throughout the whole thing, they were like, it was very raucous, and uh, those last three were fantastic. Pain is good, Louisiana style. So your movie hits. It really lampoons modern day celebrity culture. What do you think the consequences are of celebrating the anti-intellectual the way that we seem to do in 2016? You have a narcissistic, kind of self-centered, uh, not that we didn't have that uh, uh, already, but I think it just, it uh, facilitates that negative part of, you know, uh, society. At the risk of sounding like a grandpa, I feel like there really is that kind of like, Put your fucking phones down and look, you're looking at some beautiful pictures of nature or, you know, this thing and you're in it. Just put it down and, and observe, you know? And that's kind of depressing when you see a lot of that. Oh, this is yours. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. How do you make a hot sauce? I'm glad you asked. Oh, it's good. Right? Yeah. It's got almost got like a a tomato easing. We wanted it to be kind of hot, so we have it hot, but then we undercut it with like a pineapple citrus mm. blend, so it kind of Trojan it horses in that heat, oh, I it like lights it. up your mouth, and we got you a bottle so you can take one home. A heatness exclusive. They distribute it, and then Homeboy's Hot Sauce. Oh, and there's your name on there. Right on nice. my name. Got it right I like there. this a lot. As far as my question, you know, Mr. Show is considered by many to be, you know, one of the best sketch comedy shows that's ever been made. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but it has kind of a second life because every once in a while you'll see these little articles pop up. It's like, yeah, yeah the, the, are you, are you, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, I want you to finish it. That Mr. Show comes true? Like, thing? yeah, predicting yeah, yeah. the future. Yeah, yeah. There's all these sketches that you guys did and then they've somehow I think they're, materialized. I think the list is like 14 or 15 at this point. I have a couple, a handful that I want to yeah. bounce off of you and I just want to know, were you surprised to see that idea sort of come to life? Do you remember the Marilyn Manson pizza parlor? Marilyn Mozzarella employees are fun, rebellious extroverts who make their own rules. And then there's this thing, Alice Cooper's I've Cooper's been there. Town. I've been there in Denver. Yeah. What'd you think? The women have to kind of wear a cross between like uh, sexy referee or umpire <laughs> outfits, but with like Alice Cooper eyeliner, it's really weird. It's a very specific fetish. How surprised on a scale from one to 10? 4.68. 4.68, yeah. good. Baby massages, remember you had the crazy, crazy devil? I, yes, I have, I uh, when I was in London working on Todd Margaret the first time, or second year I was there, I got a photo of it, you know, Da -da 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 -da, and baby massage. When we wrote that, that was just made us all laugh. That absurd idea of like, you know, Jay Johnston massaging a baby, and the, and people were like, yes, it's wonderful for the baby. It's very good for its development. I, how crazy and absurd is that? An infant. On a scale from one to ten, how surprised were you on that one? Uh, Six point. Zero seven. Okay. Uh, you had that sketch about the government blowing up the moon. America can, should, must, and will blow up the moon. And then I don't know if you saw, but they yes. kind of uncovered that there yes. was this Cold War mission yep. to nuke the moon. And that from was, everything that I've read about it, it was, was just shocking. to show how big our balls are. Like it yeah, didn't even have a, a reason. That was a ten. That was a ten on the shock <laughs> thing. That was a ridiculous comedy bit. <laughs> that was crazy. The other ones, I can sort of get, but that one is insane. This is High River Rogue, and this is where the game starts oh, to change Oh, I saw High River Rogue uh, in Boulder. They opened up for Leftover Sam. <laughs> this seems to be such a heated and divisive election year. As someone who's done political commentary and satire for decades, is there something unique about this? Okay, now we're getting into hot territory. Uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay. How does making people laugh in this election year compare to making people laugh in other election years? When I started the tour, it was in late January and Trump was still a punchline like, this will never happen, right? By that point, there were still, uh, I think a good seven or eight people left, maybe nine. And then he became the candidate. And that, w that all happened in the course of the American part of the tour. and. Um, this tour had more people that were less familiar with my stand-up work than the last couple of tours. And so I had a lot of walkouts on this tour. Uh, some quiet, some very noisy, disruptive, uh, but there were walkouts constantly. This one is pain 100%. To me, it's the worst tasting hot sauce. It's not the hottest hot sauce, but it is just a bad taste. Yeah, it tastes a little burnt. <laughs> <laughs> right. Huh? There are several layers, levels of pain. The pain levels are marked with a percentage of, oh Jesus, <laughs> of uh, 
pain you experience. I can't believe that's a selling point. So you play the voice of uh, Zero in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. <clears throat> yeah. Nothing is up, Carl, apart from my blood pressure. I know that you're a big fan of Vice City, which is kind of how you were able to work your way into San Andreas. I cornered, um, his name is Sean, I can't remember his last name. Is it from name. Rockstar? Yeah. I cornered him drunk at, uh, I think it was at Max Fish one night. I was like, I'm a huge fan, I love it, I'll do anything, I'll work scale, whatever. You know San Andreas versus Vice City kind of pops up, which do you prefer and why? I, here's, here's why I slightly favor Vice City. I thought the extra acting, the things that people said and the, and the voices were better in Vice City. I love the, uh, hey, it's Mr. V. That guy <laughs> fucking killed me all the time. Every time he come out of the mansion, Hey, it's Mr. B. You know, your mission is uh, a worst. pretty tough mission. I stopped. Can I you could do not it? listen. Nope. I stopped. I, I, I tried to cheat. Uh, I could not listen to myself. It was so annoying. So annoying. <laughs> Don't let him get away. Punish him for his war crime. I can't even, I haven't heard it in years, but. So you were haunted by your own voice? I hated it. And I couldn't fucking do it. <laughs> The RC car thing, or the plane. It's impossible. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and it's the most annoying voice you could ever imagine accompanying that. Smells like victory. The bomb beyond insanity. Is, it, what, is there such a thing? What is beyond insanity? Let's find out. So this one that kind of- That doesn't taste good either. Mm -mm. None of them are good from here on out. I saw you post a pic from what, The Grit in Athens, Georgia? Would you ah. get the golden ball? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that one. Jesus. I may need a do rag too. <laughs> it's like a leaky tap. My the... head sweat going? Yeah. Ugh, that's awful. Beyond insanity, dude. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's inconceivable. Can't conceive of it. What's beyond insanity? I don't know, man. You tell me, motherfucker. <laughs> How would you describe beyond insanity? I'd describe it as hot habanero peppers blended with smoky chipotle peppers, natural pepper extract, based off of left as it had Product of Kansas. Well, those two things don't really go together. <laughs> How about with all the juice you have, can you ever cut that line at Franklin's Barbecue in Austin? Nobody can ever cut that line. President Obama, I think, is the only one who's ever done it. I never came in and cut in, but when uh, the very first time I went to Franklin's, which is astoundingly great, uh, uh, absolutely perfect, somebody said, oh, David Cross here, he's he wants to come down and, uh, and they have a table in the back. You go kind of behind uh, Franklin's, there's like a little picnic table. I never literally cut in line, but we went to the back table and they said, and they, it was fantastic. They don't uh, do that for everybody. No, it was, that... it was very nice. It was my wife and I and, and some friends and uh, I think some folks from Austin. I mean, I, I, it, it, exemplary. It was the best of the best. Hold them together. Yep. This is Mad Dog 357. It used to be our hottest sauce. Now it's our second hottest sauce. Oh, great. <laughs> All right. Ah. So just knowing you and your sensibilities, I think that you'd maybe be the worst in oh, a job that isn't creative or isn't what you're doing. What's the worst job you've ever had? I've had lots and lots and lots. I hereby disclaim, release, and relinquish any and all claims and actions and lawsuits. Why would anybody, it's not, what's the point? It doesn't taste good, nope. and it's unpleasant, right. and it's, it ruins everything it touches, like chocolate. Okay, let's go, all right. The worst job, I would say actually the worst job I ever had was uh, during the heat wave in Chicago in the mid 80s where a bunch of people died and I was in a warehouse working with terrible people. One time we had to take a truck, loaded up this big, big truck. The guy who was driving, anytime we'd be at a light crosswalk, and we'd yell out uh, to women, yo bitch, uh, lift up that dress, let me see that mess. And then like, <laughs> let me see that mess. And I'm implicated, but <laughs> lift up that dress, let me see that mess. Yo bitch, lift up that dress, let me see that mess. Yeah. And by proxy, you're mm -hmm. guilt by association. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is awful. Don't do that. What? <laughs> What's up, bro? Come on. He's one of those real bro guys. And that was like my, my boss. So how do this, you do it, man? How do you do this? Is it how often do you take these things? Weekly. So now that I've done so many, yeah. I feel like I'm probably desensitized from just lighting my mouth on fire once a week. 
and then the other part of it is I feel like a sense of responsibility, not only for the audience, but for you. You're a busy and talented dude. I don't want to let you down either. You know what I mean? I don't want to <laughs> let you down. I don't want to let the people down. There's just a lot of pressure. And when you have that kind of pressure, you can do amazing things. I'm doing uh, better than I expected, uh, certainly stomach-wise, but ma lips really uh, catching it in the face. So this is mega death sauce with liquid rage. Before you take the bite, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I like to dab the last wing for the okay. people out Here, there. Here, I'll let you do mine. I get nervous doing other people's because I'm like, cool. Oh, I'm not the first person to ask that? Carly Aquilino had me do hers too, not David Cross. I want, I'm just having you do it because I imagine you're going to do it less than I would do it. Boom. <sighs> that already looks <laughs> scary. That, All right. OK, so now before. I asked this question, let me just break it down. So, of course you played the great Tobias Funke. But this thing is so hot, it cracked the lid on this thing. Jesus. Yeah. Or maybe I'm just so strong that I, the torque on my screw in. I think it's the former. Oh, okay. Yep. You played the great Tobias Funke, and Arrested Development fans are kind of like Star Wars fans, and are kind of like Game of Thrones fans, where some of that fan base kind of knows more about the show. Oh, for sure. Than the people who made it and the people who are in it. What I want to do is we take a bite of this wing, and I want to hit you with some Arrested Development fan trivia. Okay. And see if you can answer it with your face on fire, okay? Okay. I feel like you're two out of three on this. Okay. That's what I'm going to say before, okay? Uh huh. All right. Cheers, David. All right. Got to the end. Ah, the worst. The series of self-help videos that George Sr. stars in and produces from prison. Um, I don't remember. Cage what? wisdom. Cage wisdom. Cage wisdom. All right, ready? This is, uh oh, can you get two out of three here? Michael negotiates the licensing rights to this cartoon character away from Joe. Oh, the, uh, the banana, the, the banana grabber. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks right. for help. And then, if George Sr. has to rush out for milk, he might accidentally run someone over and knock off his arm. And that's why you always... Uh, leave a note? Leave a, leave a note. note! Yeah, all right. David! Yeah. You made it through. How'd you do? Better than you thought you would? Worse than you thought Def you would? Definitely better than I thought. How does how does this company make money? Because it's not like you're gonna go through a bottle every month or so. A you lifetime. Know, a lifetime. Yeah. Honest mega death God. with liquid rage. The only That's the way. difference. I've had regular mega death sauce. Didn't care for it. When they added the liquid rage, that's what that's what got my attention. <laughs> that's what made you a customer. Yeah. All right, David, you made it through. The floor is yours. Let the people know what you got going on in your life. Starting on the 5th of August, you can check out my comedy special. Yeah, taped it in April in Austin, Texas. It's called uh, Making America Great Again. And hopefully there'll be an audio release at some point when I can figure that part out. Thanks for coming through, David. Yeah, man.